This is the new Thermal Master P3 Thermal Camera, and this is probably the most versatile camera that they've made today. That is because not only is it a universal camera that will work with Android and iOS, but you can also use it on PC and iPad as well. And it has a built-in manual focus lens, which means you don't need additional accessories like macro lenses. This is really the most all-in-one thermal camera that I have seen from Thermal Master. And what I'm going to do today is give you a bit of an overview of it and then show you how it performs. And then at the very end, I will share with you my thoughts. Now, just to be crystal clear before we get into this one, Thermal Master did reach out to me and said, would I be interested in taking a look at this camera? It's not the first camera I've looked at from Thermal Master. I have looked at others before. However, they may have sent this to me for free. They haven't paid me to make this video. They haven't seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. The first thing we're going to do quickly is a bit of an unboxing. You can see here on the front, it gives us some information about the camera. So it tells us about the specification down here as well. So it's got eight to 80 mil focus lens, high temperature range, as well as the information on the sensor. If I just hop onto the back and show you around the side, it tells us some of the additional specification. So eight mil macro, eight mil to 80 meter. You've got the 512 by 384 Super IR resolution. That isn't strictly the thermal resolution. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you've got the temperature range and then you've got the branding. If we open up the box inside, we will find this little box with our manual in. Here we go. We still get a nice paper manual, a quick start guide. That's quite a quick start guide, but that comes in uh, different languages. We then have this little box here, which contains a USB cable. Let's just pop it out so you can see it. So this is a USB extension cable, and they've also slaved on there a USB-C to USB-A as well, which is nice to see. And then inside, you have the thermal camera itself, which comes in this little package. Opening up this little case inside, you will see P3 thermal camera itself. And then housed in the top, there's a little adapter that converts from USB-C to lightning. Looking around the P3 in a lot more detail, you can see on the front here, we have our thermal camera and have a manual focus lens on the front. On the top, we have a USB-C port. And then around the back, we simply have the name. The big change on this camera, as I've mentioned already, is the fact that it is all OS compatible. Whilst Thermal Master have made USB-C cameras in the past, like the P2 Pro here, this was only compatible with Android. If you wanted an iOS version, you had to buy a different camera. The P3, though, not only works with both Android and Apple smartphones using USB-C, you can also use it with older Apple phones using Lightning with the included adapter. There is one camera for all of the OSs. On top of smartphones, you can also use it with tablets, and there is a PC app available for this as well, allowing you to use it pretty much on whatever device you want to. When it comes to the main specification of the P3, it is fitted with a Vox detector with a thermal resolution of 256 by 192 pixels and a 12 micrometer pitch. That thermal resolution, though, is boosted with their Super IR resolution feature that actually allows a resolution of up to 512 by 384 with their software enhancement. If you haven't seen this before, it's a really great feature. I've shown it on their other cameras like the P2 Pro and the Thor, and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit more later on. That sensor does supply an output of up to 25 hertz and a measurement range of minus 4 to plus 1122 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 20 to plus 600 degrees C. It has a thermal accuracy of 2% of the reading or plus minus 2 degrees C, and it has an NETD rating of less than 35 MK at 25 degrees C. That lens has a focal length of 4.3 millimeter and supports a range of 8 mil to 80 mil via the adjustment on the front. And what's nice about that is that you can use it for either precise board repair or general thermal use out in the field. To demonstrate this today, I'm going to be using it on my Samsung S24 Ultra, but I will also show you it on the PC as well. 
I've installed the Thermal Master app on my phone. I had to actually get this from the Thermal Master website. I couldn't find it on the Play Store. That may vary depending on if you're using Android or iOS, but I have already installed it. And then when I plug the camera in, you should then see it pop up along the bottom. I am screen recording this today as well, so I will show you that a bit too. What we're going to do first is give you an overview of the app. I'm not going to go into every single feature, but I will give you an overview of what each setting does. And then later on, I'll actually show you the thermal performance on the camera. Now you can see my face has appeared there. I'm just looking down. I've got it focused. You can see the, the camera above as well. So I'm just going to adjust the focus on that so you can see that there we go don't know if that's a hundred percent correct for me but it should be roughly right starting top to bottom up here we have some settings the x3 this is the super ir thermal resolution feature this is what gives you the enhanced resolution over the standard thermal resolution of the camera this is a really great feature which i'll show you in a bit more detail later however just to show you it there i'm going to turn it off you see that's the standard and then turn it on and that's the enhanced but again i will show you that in a little bit more detail later next to this we then have the temperature selection option so you've got minus 20 to plus 150 100 to 600 or auto where it will switch between the two automatically then next to this in the corner you have the calibrate button this is that little button there and that will calibrate the sensor to make sure that you're getting the most accurate temperature reading you can then see in the middle we have some digital zoom options so you've got one times two times four times for the digital zoom that isn't working a minute because i am recording the screen then looking along the bottom you have the main control functions for the app the first button here is our temperature sensing measurement options so this allows us to turn on various measurement options on the screen so you can see at the moment i've got all turned on we have options such as setting a specific point so I can just tap and it'll measure the temperature of that point there and show it at the top. We can turn on a line, which will allow us to draw a line along the screen. And that will then measure the temperature at different points. And again, it'll show us the average, the min and the max along the top. We have a square or rectangle, so we can tell it to measure the temperature in that area. We can set a circle as well. Or we've got the option for all, which will put measure different points on the screen and then there's a color code option for it as well next to this we then have our color palette option along the bottom this allows us to select the different palettes for the thermal camera if we start with the left we've got white hot black hot iron red red hot rainbow jungle aura city low light gold lava and medical Next, we then have the recording options. So we can take a still or we can record video. And this is available to see in the gallery, which is this button over here. If I click on the gallery, you can see then that brings up all of the recordings that we've already made. Next, we then have our opacity options. This allows us to turn on view of our cameras built into our phone. I'm currently looking forward, so that is looking backwards. But if you have the camera looking backwards, you can do an image overlay with your phone's camera as well i'll show you that in more detail later on then finally we have our main settings which gives us our brightness controls contrast scale options mirror and rotate so for instance the mirror and rotate allow you to turn the phone on its side like this and then control which way the image shows up so again got it right there and that allows you to use your phone in different orientations then on the main home screen you've got a couple of other options you've got your gallery which shows you everything that you've already taken and recorded you've got your main settings under here you've got your device details which just tells us about the model and the firmware and serial numbers we've got our image settings which has things such as automatic shutter video recording sound switch split screen options watermark and time display We've got our temperature settings, which allows us to turn on boom protection, our units, temperature alarm options. So you can set alarms for different temperature readings and then your variable correction controls to adjust your environmental settings. Then you have your other settings, which just gives you basic information about the app, such as about us, language settings and privacy.
Okay, so it's time to start showing you some footage. Here I am looking at my main filming camera and we're just going to zoom in so you can have a better look at what that's like. Moving over to my PV inverter with a Raspberry Pi at the bottom, just again to show you that zoom functionality, what we're here looking at it at and then zooming in just to show you how good the image quality is Moving over to my boys gaming laptop. This is running an RTX 4060. Definitely gets hot as you can see here on the footage. But what's really nice to see is just how clean and crisp the thermal image is from the camera. Then moving over to taking a look at some 3D printers. This is the Bamboo A1 Mini. It'd been turned on for a while. You can see the power supply down there. And then I noticed that there's some heat being generated in the PCB on the tool head. So just showing you that. Next, moving over to the heat bed on the H2D. Now this is known to have a big mains element that when you first turn it on looks like that and then as it heats up over time that heat dissipates out on the bed we're using it here to measure the temperature overall everything looking pretty good next moving over to the x5 from insta360 just again showing you what the quality is like on the thermal switching between color palettes so to demonstrate what it's like between the different modes different palettes can offer a different view and allow you to see the heat in different ways. Now looking at some electronics, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at this PCB here. What I'm going to do is pop these up here. They're going to be out of focus to you, but don't worry, we're going to have the thermal camera over the top. So let me just angle these in the right position and get them where you can see them. So there's that one there, which you can see nicely. And then we've got that little one down there. I'm quite high up at the moment. And then we'll go in a little bit closer in a second. I'm also recording the screen on there. So I'm going to pop that up on the screen so you can see it. And then I'll show you some actual recording from the camera as well. So there you can see what the image looks like. That's with the IR super resolution feature turned on. I'm just going to turn it off. That shows you it there as off. And then on. We also have a 15 times digital zoom function on this. So if I just zoom in there, I've gone into the maximum, which is 15 times. And you can see that component there in a bit more detail. If I turn off the super resolution, you can see the difference. Turn it on. So it is a feature that does make quite the difference. But what's really nice about this camera is that manual focus. So I'm going to come right in now and continue to focus the lens. So let's focus it back in there. There we go. So now you can start to see those components in a lot more detail. And then again, we can use that digital zoom function. Quite hard to show you now because my hand is moving around a lot but you really can easily identify the component you're looking for. Just to demo that super resolution, I'm going to turn it off. That's what it looks like with the super resolution off. And that's what it looks like with it on. This is absolutely brilliant for this kind of thing. The resolution is perfect on it. If I now just hop over to that other board down here, so we can now get in really close on this one. Start to see some components in a lot more detail. You can see the main board there that's getting hot. Let's zoom out. So now you can see there. We can change the color palette on this if we want to. So let's go to black hot. That then shows us again in real crisp detail. This is genuinely one of the best looking thermal cameras I've seen for board repair. We go over to red hot. You can see there the exact areas that are getting the hottest. And then we still have that digital zoom function if we want it. So we can go in and start looking at individual components nice and easily. And hop through the color palettes. Let's have a look there. But if you don't want to be working in that close, you can come out further and then we can refocus there. 
So we're, we're about crisp there. And then if we wanted to go in, we could. We could use the zoom function. No problem at all. Heading back to our main board. Let's just get to where we were in focus there. So we've got that IC. This, honestly, this camera is phenomenal. And if I wanted to get in closer, we could with the digital zoom. You can easily identify with this, no problem whatsoever. Here is some of the directly recorded footage of these PCBs as well. So you can see exactly what you're getting out of the camera. I've set up some temperature monitoring as well. Again, it's just such a good image from this thermal camera. I'll scroll through a couple of different pieces of footage just to give you an overview. But this gives you an idea of the kind of footage that you can get from this unit. And again, whilst not just for board repair, I really think this is where this camera shines. But it makes a really great general DIY tool from a thermal measurement, a thermal analysis basis. And with the price of these cameras now, they are more accessible than they have ever been. I think everyone, anyone who does anything engineering wise should have one of these in their toolbox. Now, price-wise, this camera officially retails for $350, but it is available for $299 at the moment. You can order it directly via the Thermal Master website, and there will be a link to that in the description for you as well. That may be an affiliate link, so please be aware of that. But if you don't want to use the affiliate link, you can just go straight to the Thermal Master site and order it directly. So, as you've seen, that is the P3, and honestly, I think this camera is phenomenal for the money. 299 is a great deal. What I really like about this is the fact that it does work with both Android and iOS on lightning port as well as USB-C. You have both options. It gives you that manual focus capability and it has that very nice crisp image. With that image enhancement, you get that improved resolution. And honestly, as I've said already, I have a number of these cameras. And this is by far the best looking thermal camera that I have tested at this resolution and keeps up with some of the bigger, higher resolution models available on the market. It is ideal for board repair. It is ideal for general everyday use. And if you are looking to get yourself a thermal camera, this is the one I would get because it covers you on all platforms. Great resolution, manual focus lens. It's perfect. It is as simple as that. Now, as I've said already, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to the Thermal Master website in the description. I want to say a big thank you to Thermal Master for sending this one over. And finally, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my Patreon am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to do this without your support. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look after yourself. If you have any questions, put them down below and I will try and answer them. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.